the Rebe de Julio Athletic Club, the Rebe de Julio State of Buenos Aires, Republic of Argentina. We are off Mohammed's M&M Sports in association with Arano Box Productions, President Mario Arano, along with matchmakers Kareem Ali and Samson Lukowitz present our featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the Municipal Commission of Boxing President Isakel Bernardi. Positions at ringside, Dr. Horacio Bagliero and Dr. Juan Carlos Ruiz. The timekeeper of the bell, Oscar Roca. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Raul Herrero, Vicente Fernandez, and Hector Miguel. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Rodolfo Stella. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing in the featherweight division. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing white, weighing 125 pounds. His professional record, 18 victories, 10 coming by way of knockout with two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, De Tormero Venezuela presenting the Pena Latin Junior Featherweight Champion, Jose Luis Malbuena. His opponent in the blue corner wearing green and white weighs in at 125 and one half pounds. His professional record, 25 victories. 13 coming by way of knockout with two defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, De Tunisia Mendoza Argentina, presenting the South American Middleweight Champion, Pablo Manzanito. Albuena, who is coming in off a loss, but a very good performance against Marcos Antonio Barrera, where he failed to lift the WBO title from Barrera. Are there some dangers, maybe some uh, concerns about having a letdown? Well, the great actor Richard Burton once said, you're only as good as your last movie. In boxing, that seems to be the same thing. As great as he was in this fight against Barrera, he has to have the same type of performance here in order to keep moving up the ladder and to be considered a, a, a legitimate contender for that title and show that that was not just a fluke night. All right, we'll see if Balbuena's well, role is as good as one of those ones that Richard Burton had. We will go now to Argentina for our main event. So we kick off round number one in this matchup between the lefty Jose Pablo Estrella and uh, Juan Luis Balbuena. Actually, a battle of left-handers. Balbuena coming in here off that tough loss to Marcos Antonio Barrera. It was a unanimous loss, but he gave a very, very strong performance in that fight. And he pressures Australia. Now, Buena with that long jab reaching out there. Straight left hand. Head of Balbuena. You know, what you have in this fight is two guys that nobody likes to fight. <laughs> two southpaws. Yeah. And so you, you know that the other knows what the, the, the main weakness is in fighting these guys with straight right hands. But when you look and you see the fact that the uh, Balbuena is such, uh, such a good jabber. Makes it difficult for um, Australia to Australia rather to uh, to land that punch. You may get lucky with it once in a while, but when you have 
good southpaw who's a good jab, but at the same time, you're going to have difficulty. Australia, the shorter of the two fighters, trying to work his way in, and there he does with an uppercut. Big! Isabel Buena trying to keep him at bay. Jose Australia, who uh, is a 28-year-old. He's got 13 KOs in his wins, so he's got some pop. Comes in off a first-round knockout win over Miguel Alvarado, and before that, a win over Carlos Rios, and that really was a good win. Rios three times has fought for the world title. And a good fighter. Very good fighter. Very good yeah. fighter. So that uh, speaks well of Australia. Well, Buena misses with the straight left hand. Right away, you notice that Australia tries to get under the punches. He's low, and he has great balance. There you see. Gets under the punches and then slings it out there and tries to land it. That'll do it for round one. A round in which Australia really pursued Valbuena, and as you said, from time to time was able to get inside that jab. Most effective when he gets underneath it and throws a shot to the body, and I think that's what he's going to have to concentrate. There he's shooting for the head, but if he gets underneath that and throws his punch to the body, he could be effective. in round two and in the dark trunks Jose Luis Valbuena and Jose Pablo Estrella is in the green and the white a couple of featherweights looking to land title shots although Valbuena just had one against Marcos Antonio Barrera the WBO champion very nearly made the most of it lost a unanimous decision but fought extremely well and perhaps showed that he's going to be a very tough guy for any featherweight to be. But Australia trying to do it right now, landing a good left hand. Well, I think he realizes that this guy, he's not a big puncher. And if had he had the big punch against Barrera, that maybe he had even a better chance even then. Australia realizes that. And he says, I'm going to go out and give it my best. And he's throwing caution to the wind. Every time he gets close, he's throwing a punch. Australia had a six-fight win streak coming into this uh, bout. There he is again. And he is pursuing Valbuena. His chances are, if I can just get under the punch, get close enough, and let me throw it, uh, mainly because if you'll see that uh, Valbuena's head is straight up in the air. There it is, straight in the air. So if he can throw that punch, chance, if he's close enough, chances are he can land it. We're in round two, it is scheduled for 10. This is our main event from Argentina. Al Bernstein along with Roy Foreman. Happy you joined us for this special edition of Real Fights brought to you by M&M Sports. And it's a real fight to Jose Pablo Australia. He is making this fight. He is coming to Valbueno and uh, really trying to set the pace here. Short guys have to be known for something, and it looks like Australia is trying his best to make note that if I can just press this fight early and make it look like I'm aggressive, maybe the, if it goes to decision, maybe the judges thinks that I won just by being that way. Well, and Valbueno isn't counterpunching that effectively, so neither man has really landed uh, and been extremely accurate with their punches. Thing I have noticed that both guys have been clean early in the fight. That's for sure. Well, round two will pass into the night. Let's see what round three has to offer. We head into the third round of this featherweight matchup between Jose Luis Valbueno and Jose Pablo Estrella. 
uh, Valbueno in the black trunks. A man who just fought Marco Antonio Barrera some months ago and lost a decision in trying to lift the WBO title from Barrera. And Australia, who comes in here on a six-fight win streak, and among those wins, a very impressive 10-round win over Carlos Rio. So these are two featherweights who very much believe that they have a chance to move ahead in the title picture. And of course, Valbuena rated number 14th by the WBO. I don't think he's number 14 featherweight, though. He's a little better than that. A little better. If, if, if any performance like this, he's definitely a little better than that. But Australia, so far, Roy, I think is setting the pace of this fight. And Valbueno is having a hard time, in my opinion, really landing the counter shots he needs to land. Well, what tends to happen is that when you get a fight like you did against Barrera, and you go out and you put forth your best effort and you still don't win, the next time into ring, you have to have to, you have a little doubt about, you know, what did I do wrong? And you tend to think too much. It could be a letdown, too. All of a sudden, you're in against uh, an opponent that is not only totally different from uh, Marco Antonio Barrera, you're facing another lefty. You're facing a guy who presents a whole different challenge, and there could be a letdown. But for Australia, no letdown, because to him, this fight is really vital. What, there's a sweepstakes that's going on. And everybody, you know, and at the end of that thing is uh, Nassim Hamed. And that's what, right now, each, each time when these guys go into the ring, they have to be thinking that. He is the big ticket item in the featherweight or and or junior featherweight division, mostly featherweight. These are two of the many men who dream about fighting. And good right hand by Australia. He is really taking the fight to Valbuena. And the referee is going to take a point away from Valbuena, I believe, for hitting by the, in the kidneys. In the kidneys. That's something you don't see too much. <laughs> very, not in the States. Very active referee this evening in Argentina on all fronts. Good right hand by Australia. So now, Jose Australia is in a position where he could have a two-point round easily here. And, and you, you notice that when he gets inside here, and I'm not sure if it's because of the Barrera fight, but for some reason, uh, that winner just will not dip down and throw punches. He stands straight up, and he's not going to be effective against a little guy like this. So here in round three, a point deduction makes the plot thicken. And we see some of the aggressive action by Estrella. He continues to set the pace here. And he's smart. Only when he gets close enough, Al, will he throw punches. He would not stand from a distance. Only when he gets close. And that's been very effective for him now. Eliminating, to some degree, the idea of him getting countered. Nothing worse than being at the end of, long arm, of a long arm guy. We move into round four of our main event, 10 round featherweight battle between Jose Luis Valbuena in the black and Jose Pablo Estrella in the white and green. Estrella is 25, two and one with 13 KOs and uh, Valbuena 18, two and one. He's got 10 KOs. There goes Australia down from not a knockdown, but a push. In round three, a reminder that there was a point deducted from Valbuena for hitting uh, the kidney areas, which could easily have, and probably did create a 10-8 round mm -hmm. for Australia. Now, all of a sudden, you're starting to see a little bit more muscling going around between the fighters now. Free. Is he going to take another point away? Looks like from the Valbuena. doctor's being called in. Looking at a, a cut over the eye of Valbuena, which was there but has just gotten worse. Well, it, that's on the scalp area, which normally wouldn't stop a fight. But there's a lot of blood flowing there, probably from a clash of heads. And they continue. So it's uh, getting to be a rough outing here for Jose Luis Valbuena, who based upon his performance against Marcos Antonio Barrero, probably came into this fight as a slight favorite. 
but you're only as good as your last fight sometimes. Boy, that's true. And Estrella just landing a good straight left hand. And so Balbuena having a very tough outing. He has not gotten on track yet in this match. He seems to be really rushing his punches when he does throw them. He, he, he throws the jab out there, but then he, without waiting, he just comes right back with the, uh, with the right hand, uh, with, the, with the left hand, rather. And that just shows you there's some hurriedness in, in what he's doing now. Real, maybe he's realizing, or his corner's telling him, you're behind, you're behind. So now he has to rush. Trying to make something happen. And, uh, a warning to Australia for holding by the referee. So warning to Valbuena for pushing down on the head. What he's saying is I've got to do something to stop this bull from coming in. <laughs> I don't have a cape to board, so you know I have to. <laughs> right country for the uh, bullfighting analogy yeah. too. <laughs> so here in the fourth round, it has been more of same with Australia pushing ahead and uh, being aggressive against Valbueno, and Jose Luis has just not been able to get on track offensively. Although neither man has been extremely accurate with their punches. So that'll do it for round four. to the fifth round of our main event, 10 round featherweight matchup. Jose Luis Valbuena in the black, Jose Pablo Estrella in the white and green, and 28 year old Estrella has really made this fight, but now he gets nailed with a good counter right hand by Valbuena. I think that uh, Valbuena's corner told him, you're, you're perhaps three, four rounds behind in this fight, and no telling how many punches you've got to get out and do something. But now you're starting to see it's getting to be a uh, more physical fight than it was in the first three or four rounds. Valbuena getting in with the straight left. He has not been able to land that punch very effectively. Valbuena, not a big puncher, 10 knockouts in his 18 wins. And then Australia with 13 knockouts and 25, so he too is not considered a major puncher. But you know the durability of fighters down in Argentina seems to, it affects a lot of guys. You can go down and you, you fight 10 hard rounds with those guys, and you may go out into the States or somewhere else and knock guys out. And that's because they're not conditioned to take the punches that way for some reason. Now Valbuena starting to land some good counter punches, and I think affecting Australia with his power a little bit. But you're right about the Argentine fighters. Who is ever more durable than Juan Roldan? Oh, yes. Middleweight who fought all the best during the Hagler era, and he was just a tank. <laughs> Hagler's career. Yeah, Juan Roldan was a, a tough guy to fight, and Hagler said many times after that it was one of his most difficult fights. We're in round five. It is scheduled for ten. Uppercut by Valbuena. That's a punch he would dearly like to land, but it hasn't, uh, it hasn't materialized the way he would like. The, the punches you're seeing now, what Australia is doing, something he didn't do in the first round. See how he's reaching out now and throwing his punches, whereas before he was inside. Now he's throwing them from a distance, and that's that's a disadvantage for him. Allowing Valbueno to counter him a little bit better. Also kind of lunging in a little bit more. Neither man has been extraordinarily accurate with their punches during the course of this fight. We're winding down here on round five, around which Fabueno found the mark a little more with some of those power punches. A little better round five for Valbuena. And you see evidence of that there as he lands the jab in the straight left hand. Mm -hmm. And 
Now, you'll notice that he gets a little bit more room, and as soon as the straight, as, as you say, he's lunging in now, but, but just giving him a couple of inches, he's able to land those punches from the outside, and that's what tends to soften the guy up. <laughs> there it is there. Cumulative punches can soften you up. That straight left hand may be the best punch of the fight for Valbuena. We move into the sixth round of this scheduled 12, a 10 rounder with Jose Luis Valbuena in the black trunks and Jose Pablo Estrella in the white and green doing battle in this featherweight encounter. Valbuena had a little bit of a breakthrough in the last round in which he really started to land some of his punches. Now Australia saying, I'm not going to give you that room again. I've got to stay back and stay inside on you. But as, when he's outside, he's wide open, as you stated, for a counter puncher all night long. Valbuena is a 29-year-old. Australia is 28. Alto, alto, stop Another warning to Val Bueno. Both these men at an age where they need to make something happen. Val Bueno got his title shot against Marcos Antonio Barrera toward the end of 2000. It didn't work out for him, even though he performed well. And Australia has yet to have his one shot. Well, his big victory over Carlos Rios was important. Well, good left hand by Australia. He now is wearing Valbuena down a little bit in this round. Well, Australia is acting like I want to fight for the championship. And that's, he realizes that this guy has, is coming off a great performance. And if he wants to be considered the, in the same category as him, he had to there was no choice but for him to go out and put on this type of show. He's been aggressive and has been somewhat effective. Though neither man has been as accurate as they would like with their punches. Stop! Alto! The balón. Vamos. Box. Round six. is scheduled. Ten round. Eight. Bueno is 12-1 in one of his last 13 fights, uh, except for that loss to Barrera and a draw to Carlos Barreto, which came back in 1998. He's been flawless in the last several years. And you, you, you'll see that Val Bueno is back to doing what he was doing at first few of the rounds. He's leaning back with his head straight up. You can't throw a punch off of that. So round number six, again a little better for Australia. We head into the seventh round in his scheduled ten rounder, featherweight encounter, our main event from Argentina, from Nueve de Julio, Argentina with Jose Luis Valbuena in the black trunks against Jose Pablo Estrella. It has been a fight in which Australia's pressure has been the dominant force. And now both men pick up the pace. Good right hook by Estrella, but here comes Valbuena. So it, it hit another gear here in the seventh round, didn't it? Well, these are what you call the championship here in that round now. Uh, if you want to fight, you've got to dig down and, and, and get it. And once you've been to the mountaintop, Al, you want to get back up there. And if you want to get to the mountain, you've got to struggle and keep clawing to get up there. And that's what we have. Both of these guys on the opposite sides. One's been there and the other wants to get there. And for Australia, he is continuing to be aggressive, but occasionally walking into some big shots by Valbuena. Valbuena now going down to the body. That's the best body work he's done in the course of this fight. Right hook by Australia gets there. seems to be a little tired. Well, I guess I would be too by, by this time too, but he looks to be a little bit more tired than Australia. Australia. Well, Australia's been pressuring him. 
there's the body work by Australia, which he has not done as much of on the inside as you might think he would. Surprising, the shorter guy against yeah. the taller man. Yeah. And he's been in position to do yeah, that on each a time. few occasions. <laughs> Round seven, it is scheduled for 10. What he's doing now is when he gets inside, I see if he's not punching, he tries to take his break by walking around the guy uh, with the referee. See, there he is now. He grabbed hold on to him. Let me take a break. <laughs> well, Australia just won't throw that right hook to the body. He's he will throwing not throw it to it. the head on the inside. Nice right hook gets to the head by Australia, but I think he would work the body a little bit more. his break when he gets inside now. He says, I'll fight inside and I'll take a break as soon as I get close enough to hold you. And that's exactly, there it is again. That lets you know, but I, I guess at this pace that they've kept for the last two rounds, you kind of uh, have to expect that. A slip by Australia. And so in this round, we've probably seen more concerted action than in some of the others, but Again, both men still not as accurate as they would like with their punches. But both men doing a lot more body work. That'll do it for round number seven as Australia heads back to his corner, as does Valbuena. Now, you're starting to see what happens. The end of the punches, the uh, uh, end of his arms, rather, he's, he's, uh, he's affected. Australia steps inside, lands the both guys last punches here, but now that's what you do. You get close enough, and you can't stop the guy you hold. So we're getting ready to start round number eight. We're ready to move into the eighth round of this scheduled ten rounder. The cornerman very slow in getting out. Well, this fight's over. Australia has decided that he cannot continue. And the corner threw in the towel. Why? It, apparently a hand problem for Australia. And uh, it was his left hand that was impaired. And he has decided that I can't continue. Well, one thing about it, he hurt his hand fighting. <laughs> and he did a lot of that. He did do that, and a, a tough break for Australia because you can argue the case strongly that that he uh, that he was ahead in this fight. Mm -hmm. I, I, no doubt, I, I would have liked to have seen the judges' uh, scorecards. But it is to no avail because Australia ends up losing this match, and uh, Valbuena. Gets the win. And a lot of times, when something that happens in this field, sometimes the fight ahead, it does tend to be because, uh, because of bad rap The fight, a winner by TKO, Jose Luis Valbuena. Valbuena gets the win. And for him, it is his 19th as a pro. So a strange ending to that fight in which Australia, we thought, maybe had a hand problem, but in reality it was his corner that threw in the towel, and apparently they or Australia just didn't want to go on. Very strange stoppage on Australia's part in a fight in which you could easily make the case he was winning. He was a guy that was putting on an amazing performance against a guy that everyone thought would go out and dominate him. He quit. Yeah, that's always inexplicable, and it is in this case as well. Well, overall, in the evening, we saw perhaps the emergence of uh, a cruiserweight champion from the past, um, and we saw a youngster in Herrera who shows some uh, promise. Real fights. <laughs> Most of them were, that's right. You can't say it any better than that. Well, for Roy Foreman, I'm Al Bernstein, and we are happy you joined us for this edition of Real Fights. We'll see you next time.